Good morning, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet, this very Friday morning of the 12th day of the third month in the year that our most high Elohim has created. We welcome each and every one of you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. This is a live presentation because the time now is two minutes past 7 a.m. in the land of Biafra, two minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are. And as always, and as usual, as I welcome you, please endeavor to welcome other people as well. Today's session is going to be interactive. It is going to be a question and an answer session. You'll be able to ask your questions and I will be able to deal with it. That is the way we dispense with innuendo, with gossip, and with outright lies. We deal with all of that on this glorious platform, and this day will not be an exception. As always, we are broadcasting on multiple channels, on multiple platforms. We are on YouTube, University of Radio Biafra on YouTube. We are, of course, on IPOB Community Radio, Radio Biafra app. We are also streaming this content on Twitter, on my official Twitter handle, at Mazen Namde Kano. I believe I have about 271,000 followers. Not enough, of course, due to the efforts of our enemies to suppress and to try to deny your space to tell the world what is actually happening in the damnable zoological republic that notwithstanding we resolutely of course and relentlessly continue to pursue this glorious restoration of biafra there is nothing the enemies can do we are pushing ahead resolutely and biafra is very very imminent and as always please tell those who are around you because we are also on fm we are on satellite and, of course, on, I think it's tune-in as well, and all other platforms that you can receive our broadcast and our last transmission on. I am going to open the line. Please get your pen and paper ready because I'm going to give you a telephone number to call. And it's on Signal, please. On Signal. Signal app is what we are using from now on in. The number is plus four four seven seven six one. Eight two five three four six. If you call us on that very line, we are going to be able to take your call. It is very, very important that you try and call us this very morning to air your views and opinions and, of course, to ask very serious questions. Our lines are open now, please. You may call us. If you call us, we will, of course, take your call. And some of you, I may even extend you the courtesy of having to return your calls. Please, one at a time, I beg of you. Some have been calling and calling and calling. Once I accept you because of the signal, you need to be accepted. Once I accept you, then you can then call. You can call, please. Once I accept you, you can then call. I have a caller on the line, please. Give us your name and where you're calling from and then ask me, a very difficult question, please. Even if it is a rumor or gossip, ask and I will answer you live and direct so that the whole world can hear. Good morning, sir. On the number by your excellency, I am evangelist Susan Akuwoki, calling from Pub, Biafra Land. Thank you, God. You will protect and keep you. You will lead us to Biafra. Please, my simple question is about the fast and prayer. Some people said it has started. No, it hasn't. So I want it has not started fire, yet. Please. When it starts, Thank I will you. announce it live on air on this glorious platform you, that God himself has made. I will announce it. We Thank have not started. You, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank I will you, be in Israel to announce it. And then we will start Thank our you. fasting and prayers from that. Thank you very, very much. They wanted clarification. I don't know why our people sometimes do not pay attention. They do not listen. I don't understand the reason why. I have another caller on the line. This caller, can you hear me? Give us your name and where you're calling from, please. The caller on the line, can you hear me for the last time? Can you hear me? No. He is listening via his system. Perhaps he is joining us for the very first time. 
and do not understand that once your call is taken, then you begin to speak. That was the reason why I had my secretary try to do not call again. If I accept your call and you do not speak immediately, then I will no longer take your call. The caller on the line, can you hear me please, your name and where you're calling from? Good morning, good morning my leader from here. My name, my name is Pastor Jack and I'm calling from Lagos. Thank you, go ahead. Uh, uh, Thank you, sir. I want to first of all appreciate you for your enormous work and to quick care and continue to keep you and to lead us into Biafra. So my question this morning is, sir, also Dimba, the Fulani administration in Imo State is becoming, in fact, it's not only becoming, it has become a problem to us. They are profiling our people and abducting our people. Are we not, are we, is that not anything we are going to do to actually tell this Janjaweed slave that Imo State is Biafra land and we cannot run away from him, rather he will run away from us. And secondly, I I want our people to continue to support ESN to get to get them more equipped because uh, we don't equipped. beg anybody to support ESN. If you don't support them, Fran will take over your land. Why are you begging? Why am I begging anybody to support? Why should you beg anybody to support? Is this some kind of um, 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 uh, charity that we had? No, don't support ESN now, and Fran will take over your village. As simple as that. It's not, a, it's not a question of begging, begging. And why should you beg anybody to, to, to defend his father's compound? Don't beg anybody, please. Regarding the idiots, the, the, the Fulani imposed administrator of Imo State, that very fool, that original 419er, that same person that George Obioso took to Fulani Janjaweed to make him the governor of Imo State from number four to number one. Very soon he will know that Imo belongs to Biafra, not to him. He will understand that. Him. No, he will understand it very clearly. They now they are doubting. Vanguard won't write about it. No zoo newspaper. BBC will cannot go to investigate. No, because they are working for new colonialists. They understand what Biafra portends for the freedom of black people, not just in Africa, but the whole world. They know it. And they are fighting to nail to try to stop this unstoppable movement. Hope those of will pay very dearly. I am telling them now, they will pretend they've not heard anything. Any day will respond, you see every manner of idiot who rise up to speak. Now they are profiling and abducting people at all the entry points into a world. Nobody will say anything. That is the thing about black people and that is why they are the lowest of the low in the whole world because of their evil nature. When they see evil happening, they keep quiet. That was how slavery was sustained for centuries until England, of all people, said no to it by abolishing slavery. In fact, even some black people were upset that slavery was abolished. We have the mentality of such people still with us till this very day. Hope those of them will pay very dearly. I'm saying it live. This damn do not call. Once we call you and you don't pick your call, that is the end of you. That is the end of you. You can no longer call. You can no. I said no WhatsApp call. Unanopadenti is only on signal. No WhatsApp call, please. Only on signal. You can only call on signal. No WhatsApp call, only on signal. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you're calling from. Good morning, sir. My name is Wisdom. I am calling from uh, Omaha. Wisdom from Omaha, please go ahead. What is your question? I, I just want to thank you for the good work you are doing and uh, what you have been doing for us. May Chuko Kikabiyama bless you and uh, continue to bless you. you see? What you, you went to do the, the time you went to Abuja to negotiate for? To ne negotiate for what? All right, you went to uh, forest structuring so that the seaport will be opened in all these our coastal region. But our brothers, they don't understand this. They are deeply so. Even today, they increased the fuel or uh, the, uh, the price of fuel to uh, 212, 212 naira. We are really suffering in this country, and they don't know that we are suffering. People don't know they are suffering because they they prefer to live in denial and stupidity 
Sometimes you stop blaming those in Abuja, you stop blaming the Fulani Janjaweed, and we start to blame ourselves. How did we get to this position? That is exactly the reason why I was admonishing Vanguard newspaper and all the journalists in the zoo. They are part and parcel of the, they do not enlighten and educate the people as to their rights and their privileges. They should be enjoying as citizens of any country anywhere in the world. They have failed very woefully. And that is why people are suffering. The same fuel that was at 86 in Naira. And the foreign Janja will say, Jonathan must go. It is 86 Naira. It's too high. I will bring it down to 40 today. As you're saying, it is at 200 and uh, something. 212 or thereabout. And the people are walking about as if nothing is wrong. That is the brain of a black person. That's what we're seeking to correct. That is the reason why black people are the lowest of the low. They are poor. They see something and they fail to act upon it immediately. This type of nonsense cannot happen in any white man's country. It's not possible. It can never. People will come out and protest. But in the zoo, they cannot protest. When they come out, the time we join their end side, they said, oh, IPOB has come to hijack, to hijack. And we said we will not participate in the second one. Look, the second one only lasted for, for 45 minutes and they ran them up because they don't have the mental toughness needed to propel a mass revolution. Only IPOB can. And they know it. And I say to that apologies to them, only IPOB can effect a revolution. No other group of people can. It's impossible. I'm not boasting that you know it's true. Go and try and see. That is why they are making every effort to try to subdue what we are doing by lying to everybody. Bareface lies. And Vanguard was busy publishing such junk. Unbelievable. This UG. This person called Dan. I am going to block you. I took, I took your call a while ago and you idiotically did not answer. The person on the line, can you hear me please? Your name and where you are, if you may. Good morning from here. I'm good from here. I'm calling from Malaysia. From my Malaysia. Name is Okafo, Okafo, go ahead. We are listening. Yeah, my What's your question? Yes, my leader. I want to ask you one simple question. When yes. are we start the killing of all these uh, wicked politicians in evil lands? When are we start of killing them? Because once we chase them out, to get the Afra will be very easy for us. Them and their family members. I think that um, a time and place will be appointed by Elohim, the God Almighty. It is not left to us. I think God is going to judge them. It is not up to me to judge because I think the good book said, you should not judge anyone that you may not be judged. I am not going to judge any of them. The same thing with terrorists. All we need to do is to present them before God and then God will judge them. And very soon that is going to happen. God is going to judge them very soon, not us. Our job, as Putin said, is to make sure that we send them into the presence of God. All of them. They have been killing us. They are abducting us. All of them are now pretending, including BBC, all the fulefus, all the gangs of criminals, they are pretending they cannot see what Hopus or Emma is doing. Everybody's pretending. Or what we did, you know, people. They are all pretending. Do you think I'm going to forgive and forget? You must be insane. I can never forgive nor forget. Instead, we all sink. Let them keep abducting. You can see DSS abducting everywhere. That we, the day now we rise up against DSS, people will not start the story from the beginning. They cut it from the middle. Now DSS is everywhere abducting. British government, they have kept quiet. Daily Trust, they cannot report it. Everybody is quiet. Now they are going, the, the, the a man and the wife was abducted in Calabar. The wife went to work. In their shop yesterday, she was taken from them. Everybody is quiet. DSS abducting innocent. They cannot abduct bandits. They cannot abduct Boko Haram. They cannot abduct all those sponsoring bandits and Boko Haram in the north of the zoo. It's only in our land that you see DSA director, a full and a man, one idiot called Haruna in Imo State, abducting people, and all of you are now keeping quiet. Any day we respond now. You see all the idiots, they will rise up. And we are going to respond very soon. Useless zoological republic. You people have not seen madness. You are going to see what is greater, or should I say worse than madness. I won't get to this. The caller on the line, can you hear me? 
Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Your name and where you're calling from, if you may. I am uh, Mazi uh, Moses uh, Teledo. I'm calling from India. From India. Please go ahead. We're listening. The world is listening, of course. Go ahead. Yes, Mazi. I want to just make uh, a suggestion. Uh, this suggestion is uh, all about uh, uh, our brother and our, our uncle, um, Agro Yurosi, who died as a as a child of circumstances because i am aware that he is not involved in the coup and uh, this is a man who served who commanded the united nations army for good four years the coup plotters did not involve him the janja with the plan and they killed him so i want him to be immortalized it's my suggestion in the land of biafra and secondly the 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 war mission that is in Omaha is third Nigerian national war mission. That is Biafra national war mission. We are Ojuku, you know, everything about Biafra was, you know, station. So I want all those places, I want Biafrans to take over that place. Secondly, we are earnestly expecting you in India. Thank you, Mazi. God bless you. God will continue to protect you. No evil plan of the enemy will come close to you. You Isse. until Biafra is restored. And beyond. He said, he said, thank you very much for that. On the first one about my great uncle, Agi Ronsi, the only battlefield decorated general in the history of Nigeria. He is the only battlefield decorated general. The only man that earned his stripes, his rank, in the battlefield, the rest are all quota, including Buratai that just left. That was specialized in killing civilians. Ironsi went outside Nigeria to go and fight in the Congo, commanded the UN there admirably, and he was made a general. Not all these paper general. That is one thing they don't like about us. That is one thing. I mean, in, in Britain, there are good people that always the, the evil ones overshadow the good people. As I said, in the main, English people are very, very tolerant, very wonderful people, unbiased. But there are, say, pockets of evil amongst them. Ironsi was decorated in the battlefield of Congo, where he fought. Tell me any full-on Janja with that fought outside Nigeria before. None. It is only by killing civilians. Or during the war, when our hands were tied behind our back, food blockade, air, land, and sea blockade by Britain and Russia. They planned and connived and gave them Egyptian pilots flying MiG aircraft belonging to Russia. Despite the fact that Nigeria was under arms embargo, they gave weapons to go on to come and fight and kill us. But uh, our uncle made a very big mistake. He's from my clan, from my mother's village. A great, great man, no doubt. And we shall do the best we can. But he made a very big mistake. He's my uncle, but I will say it. That Victoria is my aunt, the wife. John, we went to the same school together. He was my senior at Government College of Maya. We're very close. The families are very close. The Euronsi family and the Kano family have been very close for very many years. I love them very dearly. And I'm sure they do towards me. But my uncle made a very big mistake. The mistake he made was to promulgate a decree uniting Nigeria. He should have listened to Nzogu, what Nzogu had to say. And I think um, in two days' time, not tomorrow, I think on Sunday night, I will do a program specifically to address the issue of Fulani Janja Buddhism. And there I will mention my great uncle, Agui Ronsi, a great man indeed. And we shall see what we can do to immortalize him. He'll be remembered. The only general you have in Nigeria, the only general, you know, as a general, you have to earn your stripes. Those stars you have, you have to earn them. Not in the office by writing petition and writing quota. It's our turn. They give you, make you a general. That is why they, you've seen them fighting their so-called bandits. They cannot defeat them. Quota generals, that's who they are. Only agree, you don't see. The only Niger, I think to an extent, um, um, what's this man's name? The one um, that uh, you thought was Brigade Ogundikwe. Well, he wasn't a general. Only agree, you don't see. And they, that is why they, that is the, thank you very much for this very brilliant question anyway. That is only the, the, the only man in the history of the zoo military that went outside and went outside, fought a war and won and came back as a general. 
The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you are. Can you hear me? He cannot hear me. He cannot hear me. He cannot hear me. He has left. He has left. I'm sure that many more people are on the line trying the best they can to try and get in. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you are, if you may. Yes, my leader. Good morning. Good morning to you. My name is Vicent Okechuku. I am calling from Casablanca, Morocco. Casablanca in Morocco. Please go ahead. The world is listening. Yes, my leader. You know, history have it that uh, when a uh, Jewish state want to restore their state, the unknown government kill all those who do not support in Jewish state. This is high time. I just want to make a contribution. This is high time. We kill every garden shit that is not supporting ESN and IPOB in Biafra land, especially the Eastern governors and all those who flee, including Joey Bukwe and everybody. Those people that are talking that rubbish against ESN and, and the IPOB must go down. We, we have to send them to God for judgment. That's what I want to contribute, my leader. Thank you. I, I'm not going to kill anybody, please. I'm, I want to make this very, very clear. I am not going to kill anybody, but my job is to ensure that we present them before God for judgment. I'm not going to judge anybody. I'm not going to execute anybody. It is for God to do all of that, not me. Thank you very much. Of course, I can understand your anger. My dear brother, I can understand your anger. We share the same anger. Look at the way the Fulanis are fighting to take over our land. And we are struggling to defend our land. And some of our people are supporting the Fulani to take over our land. Hey, very sad indeed. The caller on the line, can you hear me, your name, and where you are, please, if you may? Good morning. This is Daniel. I'm calling from Belgium. From Belgium, thank you very much. The world is listening. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Onyendu, I want to thank you for all you have said this morning and uh, for your analysis. I have been a member of uh, this uh, IPOB since 2013. I'm still a member. Uh, actually, I know all what you have explained about the, the thing they said about. You are very far from the microphone. Take it off speakerphone, please. Speak into your phone direct so it can come out here very okay, well. Sir. Go ahead. I said, actually, I have, I have heard all what you have said this morning, and uh, we know who those people who are battling those lies, and we tell them that if anything happens to you, they are going to see how we are. We know their leader, and they said that they, they have, their, their, their main effort is to bring IPOB IPO down, and I have already told them that it's going to take them another 200 or more millions of years for them to bring IPOB down that we are very strong and we are strong behind you. Whatever you want to do, do it. I don't have a, a, a daughter to give you or anything, but if your wife will allow, maybe you come and take my own also and join to your own. So do whatever <laughs> you want to do. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. I will not I take your wife to join to my own. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I have a very, a very, very beautiful wife. <laughs> I'm not going to take yours, please. Elohim gave your Chico government gave you your wife, and uh, she is going to. I don't want to use the word sir before the feminists who come after me. Two of you are going to have a very fruitful and enjoyable life together. They understand. Do you think the zoo is foolish? They see me when I travel. Do you think they don't see me when I travel across international borders? Of course, they know. But they all know. But they also understand that should anything happen to me, all their children will be headed in the afternoon, 12 noon, everywhere they are in the world, the same day. The same hour, the same minute all over the world. They know how crazy we are. Do you think, do you think they don't know? They know how crazy we are. And they don't, they won't try that rubbish. And they know it very well that they cannot try it. And they know that uh, hell is coming. Hey, hell is coming to the zoo. If you have not gotten your Somali visa, please go and apply for it because you will need it. I assure you, you are going to need it. We are live and we are direct. Those claiming they'll bring down, do you know what is IPOB? Bring a movement of this magnitude down. Who is the, who is the bagger? Who is the, you can try. Others have tried. They have failed and they will continue to fail. The caller on the line, I have you live and the whole world is listening. Give us your name and where you are. Good morning, Good morning to you. 
Good morning. My name is Ifai Injika. I'm calling from Ghana. From Ghana. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. We're listening. Sir, sir, I'm happy to get you this morning. Sir, my question is that. Sir, my. What is your question? My question this morning is about this uh, COVID-19 that Zoom want to give our people. Yes. What is our uh, your advice to our people back home? Because I don't trust I don't trust Nigeria Zoom to give our people the COVID-19 vaccine. So what are you going to say about this, sir? Thank you, sir. It's a very good question. What I have to say is that um, I leave that to the judgment of our people, but I'm not going to take it myself. I will not take it myself. When it comes to matters of personal health and uh, people's life, how they lead it, it is not for us to tell them what to do. I will not take it. As somebody quite rightly asked, how come during the palliative uh, time at the height of COVID-19 lockdown, you couldn't give people the palliative the, that they need? Now you're giving the vaccine. It is a, It doesn't make sense to me. Makes no sense. So... I'm advising them. I'm, I'm not going to take it myself. The people can advise themselves on what to do. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Good morning, sir. I do. Good morning to you. Your name and where you're calling from? My name is My name is Chine, Dumas Chine. I'm calling from Cambodia. From South Cambodia. Asia. We are everywhere. That is what drives our enemies mad, that IPOB is everywhere, all over the world. Unbelievable. Please go ahead. We are listening. In Cambodia, or from Mazi, Cambodia, I should Mazi, say. Right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to thank you for your efforts, what you have been doing for us. May Kabiyama bless you. You say, I'm blessed you too. Uh, Mazi, my question, I just want to ask you a question so that you can ask the zoo. My question is the question that I have for the zoo. You ask, I want you to ask the zoo, the zoo people, because they are they they don't they don't learn. Ask them where 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 uh, their their first lady when they, their president took his own uh, vaccination. Because I saw other president taking their vaccination with their first lady beside them. <laughs> so I don't know I don't know where when the woman or uh, does it mean that uh, the the Osibanjo is uh, the new wife? I don't know uh, as they presented. So ask them that question. I heard them answer you. So that's, <laughs> that is no wrong questions. <laughs> the, the, the truth, the truth is that the, the zoo, the zoo, uh, they, they lack knowledge. Because why they say that they lack knowledge is that the money they are spending is in bri uh, bribing uh, the, the world um, um, leaders and the world, uh, world media uh, media are uh, enough for them to take care of the agitation that we are what we are clamoring for yes because if they have using all those money to fix our roads our railway our seaport and all those things i don't think that would be needed for biafra but they lack knowledge they're, they're, they're still they're still spending money they are still giving them money they should have said that they have failed their money their, their money will finish and yet they will not achieve anything so what is happening now is that you know in our in our evil uh, language they say that uh, when you when two people finish fighting you will be hearing Yes. Touch me, let me touch you. Touch me, let me touch you. Touch me, let me touch you. Because both so of them are tired. Yes. Happening now. Yes. So all these things you see them doing is just touch me, let me touch you. They have failed. They know that I have failed woefully. So now what I'm what I know that our uh, our able God Abiyama, will disgrace them. All these you our able leaders and uh, all those uh, governors that have you know they, they know that I have failed. They cannot do anything. So my my prayer for them is that they will reap what they sow. You see? We'll them and we'll reward them. You see? So we don't need to kill them. We don't need to uh, hunt them. We we'll them and we'll hunt them. God will judge them just like you God said. will judge them, May not God me. I won't you. judge them. We we'll, we'll present them before May God, God and God will yeah. pass judgment on them. So that is that is my condition, my my leader. May God bless you and you too. Thank you very much. And I want to ask all the zoo people listening, or the zoo animals that are listening this morning. From wherever they may be, where is your so-called first lady? Where is she? People who cannot reason nor think properly. Nigerians, where is your so-called first lady? Where is she? Have you seen? I tweeted last night. Somebody kindly compiled, and I think that's what we need to do. 
for the coming week. Somebody should, people should go and compile 16 teachers of the different Buharis that they have given to them to say is their president. So I tweeted it yesterday and I asked the question. So is number eight on that picture? If you go to my Twitter um, 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 uh, handle, you will see that I tweeted 16 photographs of uh, the person they claim is, is Buhari. And I asked them, is number eight also Buhari? I don't know why, anyway, I'm, I don't want to go mad trying to understand how idiotic black people are sometimes. But where is Aisha anyway? She's nowhere to be found. She's in Dubai having fun. Dubai built by other people, built by Arabs. People that suffer, people that love their country, they built Dubai. UAE made it great. All you can do as a useless uh, nigger is to run there and go and enjoy him without shame. That's where Aisha is. Is Dubai now the new Nigeria? Of course, who knows it may be. After all, Kempinski Hotel in Dubai is owned by Atiku. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you're yes. calling from. Yes, good morning, sir. Good morning to you. I'm calling from Sapele Delta State. From Sapele? Sapele, Sapele yes, is in sir. Biafra land. Please go ahead. We are listening. Uh, my question that I want to ask is that there are some issues in all those states. When Biafra comes, will they join? Yes, we are going to hold a referendum across the board. Everybody who identifies as a Biafran, anywhere the women tie to peace wrapper, we are going to conduct a referendum and they decide where they wish to belong. We are not going to coerce nor force anybody to join us. Our people in Ondo, we don't recognize all those stupid boundaries. I don't recognize the boundaries drawn by Britain, given to me, I call, uh, calling it Nigeria. In the same vein that I do not believe nor subscribe to the boundaries drawn up by Fulani Ginger Weed via their Boundary Adjustment Commission, car carving our people into different states. Ondo is a Yoruba state, and I want it to remain so. But there are my Ajo brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers who are in Ondo, and they shouldn't be there. The same way that there are some of our people who are in, in Kogi and also in, um, in Benue. They are coming with us. We're not going to leave anyone behind. I cannot be championing and campaigning for Igbo people in Benue to be part of Biafra, and then I will leave Igbo people in Ondo to be part of to be part of Oduduwa. It's not going to happen. We will negotiate. We will discuss with our, our Oduduwa brothers and sisters, our brethren from that part of the world, and say to them, "These are our people. Let's go and ask them where they wish to belong." As simple as that. Our our let's, our quest for Biafra is a democratic type of Biafra, where the people will have to willingly agree to join Biafra or not to join Biafra. So we go to Ondo and we ask them, do you want to be part of Biafra or not? Then they say yes or no. If they, uh, Of course, they'll say yes. And they'll come back home where they belong. It is, that is what the Fulanese did. Uh, there is a program I'm going to do. Anybody, if you go and buy data, go and do whatever you can. Go and buy a battery for your radio and listen to the broadcast I'm going to make on Sunday by the grace of the Most High. People will be shocked that Muslims are even a minority in Nigeria. Muslims are a minority in Nigeria. The majority of people living in the North are not Fulani or Hausa either. I'm going to shock with revelation, facts and figures from British census many, many years ago. We allow Fulani people to be drawing boundaries for us, telling us who should be uh, who should be uh, our our brother and who shouldn't be? Who should be our neighbor or who shouldn't be? That's something they did. They came to him and said they cut on Haji Ebema into two. Half is now Niger Delta, uh, Rivers. The other half is in Imo. Ibo. All that nonsense must come to an end. They are coming with us. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. All at once your mother ties to. They asked me, where is the boundary? As I told you, my mother, did you, where is the boundary of Biafra? How many peace wrappers does your mother tie? As simple as that. We are the only people that tie to peace wrapper all over the whole world. Wherever you see our women, they are unique, you will know. If we are not uh, related by blood, why would they be tying to peace wrapper all the way from, from, from Igodo Migodo to Bakasi? The caller on the line, can you hear me? I have a caller on the line. Sip, can you hear me? Hello. 
No, he is wasting too much time. You know, I want, if you're calling us, you need to be agile. Don't behave like a zoo person. Here we are agile because we are Biafrans. Be agile. Once you pick your call, you start speaking immediately. If you do not speak, your call will be terminated. That is who we are and that is the way we roll. If you do not understand that, then there is a very big problem. We are live and direct this morning and the whole world is listening. Too many calls are coming in and, of course, jamming the line as always. We even prefer it that way. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? And you speak immediately your name and where you are, if you may. The caller on the line, can you, is reconnecting. They say it's reconnecting. I don't know. It is not from this end. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, please. Your name and where you are, please. Can you hear me? No. They have wasted time. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that these are Biafrans, to be honest with you, because we don't. Once I pick your call, you start speaking immediately. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Hey, Mazi, good morning. Good morning to you, my dear sister okay. or mother, depending on your age. Where are you calling from? Yeah, yeah my name is Mada I am calling from Caribbean. Which How part of you? the Caribbean are you in? Jamaica? Are you in Barbados? No, I, mean, are you... I am. I am. I am. I am. I am calling from St. Lucia. From St. Lucia, thank you very much. Wada, we are listening. So in which case, you're my sister. Please go ahead, we are listening. What do you have to say? Yes. Okay, my, 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 my question, my, what I'm saying is that the problem we have with our Igbo governors is not only uh, okay, Z, Baz, all of them, they are all doing the same thing. Uh, and if all of them are doing the same thing to us. So what we are doing, we asking God to to judge all of them, not only uh, not only Hopus or Dima, if you understand what I'm of saying. Of course I do, I do. They are all in it yes. together. They are all in it yes. together. You are calling from Saint Lucia. Do we have a? Uh, of course we have IPOB family in Saint Lucia. Is that correct? We we have IPOB in Jamaica. In Jamaica and the Trinidad, Trinidad, we are all together. All together, you have we have presence in Jamaica. How about you? You're coming from Saint Lucia, is that correct? Yes, it's remember it's an island, so we do, we are not many here. So, but all the it doesn't matter how many together. you are. All of you must have an IPOB family in Saint Lucia, <laughs> even if it is yourself, your husband, your your boyfriend, whoever, your child. You must start IPOB family in Saint Lucia. And I want it to be independent of the rest of them. I know we have significant <laughs> presence in, in the whole of the Caribbean, but I want a family in St. Lucia. And thank you very much for calling. No, Madge, I'm not a, I'm not married. I'm a nun. So we are oh, the sisters. Oh, the you're house. a sister. You're, you're, you're people are the people praying for us 24 hours a day. Is that correct? Yes. Of, yes. I am. We are following everything. We're following everything. Thank you very much, my dear sister, because praying. it is what people don't understand is this. In every country doing well around the world, there are those praying 24 hours a day for them. Their job is just to pray. Nothing more, nothing less. That is what I want people to understand. So all our sisters, all our nuns praying for us, may you cook a yes. bless each and every one of you. And your prayers are working. I want you to understand yes. that your prayers are working. All our sisters, those in the USA, those in Brazil, and now some of you in the Caribbean, I'm not sure I've spoken to any nun before, any sister from the Caribbean, I have spoken to those of them from yes, I have, I've, yes, yes, I've been calling you before. You've been calling me before. Calling before. Thank you. Thank yes. you very much for that. I, I can recall mm -hmm. those in Brazil and those in the USA. And I thank you very much for calling and continue to pray for us. Continue to pray okay, for man. the restoration of Biafra. Mm -hmm. And may Elohim yes. guide, protect, yes. and keep you now and always. He said, he said, he said, thank you very, very much. Our sister, a reverend sister who is praying for us. There are many of them all over the place, scattered all over the world, praying every blessed day. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you are. Yeah, Maz. Maz, good morning. Good morning to you, Maz, please. Good, good morning. I'm Nicholas Wanunko from Germany. From Germany. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my question, my question is... Uh, does it mean that our president, because I don't want to call him uh, Buhari because he's not Buhari, does it mean that he's now, we now selected somebody that is deaf and dumb as a president who cannot speak to the country, to the people that is uh, leading? Yes, because there is no president there, as you said. There is nobody there. What you have, if you look at the drift, both in terms of policy 
and in terms of um, implementation of those policies, you will see that there are many people who are in charge in Asarok, of which the coordinator is um, Ibrahim Gambari. There is no president in Nigeria. Everybody knows that. That is why he cannot speak. That is why he doesn't address, a, he can no longer have any um, 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 chat with the press. That is why Nigeria is adrift. That is why you have so much insecurity because nobody is in charge. What they have done is to try to use the vacuum created by the death of Buhari to try to advance an unbridled Fulani Janjaweed agenda of conquest and subjugation, which we are the first people to mount any credible resistance. Only I, from the beginning, only IPOB resisted them. And we are resisting them until tomorrow. We will continue to resist them until tomorrow morning. What I'm trying to say to you, yeah. in effect, is, is there is no Buhari. I have staked yeah, everything on it. I have yeah, that idiot they called to Janin saying they're working for AFP. Very soon we shall yeah. meet him in court because I want to prove to the world that Buhari is dead. Buhari is dead long time ago, dead and buried, and they're deceiving everybody. Yeah, it, it, the reason yeah, why yeah. the Nigerian media don't want to talk about it is because they are hoping that Tinubu will go in. That's all. So they'll start enjoying again. Please go ahead. Yeah, because uh, because uh, I could remember that first time he went to London for treatment. He spent three months. Somebody that was coming out of the flight, Breeze was even carrying him. They were supporting him. And all of a sudden, we have a boy that have never even fallen sick again. That tells you. They tell it is money. You know, we black people, we are very funny the way we reason. This UG, may God have mercy upon us. They say it's money. He has got money. And I'm saying that this little boy you have now in Asarok is younger than Bill Gates. He looks younger yes. than Bill Gates. Bill Gates yeah. is one of the richest men in the world. He wants to live forever, to kill everybody else and live forever. Why can't he use that same money? George Soros, that broke the Bank of England. He was the man that bet against the, the pound leaving the ERM. That was in 1992, if I'm not mistaken. He broke the oh. bank. In the, he made five billion pounds profit betting against the pound to leave the ERM. He is oh. one of the richest men in the world. He has more money than Nigeria put together. He will loan money to Nigeria. Why is he not as young as Buhari or avail himself of the same treatment that made Buhari to look so young? I don't know what is wrong with the brain of this UG. Black no, people, no. I don't know what is wrong with our brain that we cannot reason properly. Buhari is dead. Yeah, Buhari is dead. Ma, the, the, ma, the actually, Nigerians, are, we have a lot of learned illiterates in Nigeria. They are all <laughs> learned, but they are, they are illiterates. I'm sorry to say it as if they have never seen the four walls of a school before. Very, very sad indeed. That, but it's not just that. Can you let me ask you, uh, or let us um, have or uh, uh, um, ponder this very conundrum? Do you know Japan that is doing very well? You see Japan that is doing very very well today. Yes. Most of yes. the Japanese scientists read and studied in America. They went back uh -huh. to Japan. They replicated what they learned in America, and other uh -huh. Southeast Asian countries emulated what Japan did. And today they are all growing and doing very, very well. Now, you hear our people tell you, oh, I went to Yale, I went to Harvard, I went to Cambridge, I went to Oxford. But you, your mates that went to the same school as you did, look at their countries. But yeah. look at the zoo, where you claim you're learned. What you, as you said, what we have are learned illiterates. Illiterates, yeah, honestly. I met somebody from Liberia them, yeah. in London many, many years ago, in England, many years ago. We were in a restaurant in the evening eating, myself and my friends. And he came there and we were all introducing ourselves. And he said to us, I remember very vividly, he said, or very clearly, I should say, anytime I meet any black person and you introduce yourself as a professor, I will slap you regardless of where you are. <laughs> and I, I asked him why. He said he doesn't care if he goes to jail. He said, anybody in this place now we are eating, if you say you are, if you're a black person and you say you're a professor, I will come and I will slap you. And I asked yeah, him why. Yeah, he said course. that yeah. we blacks have not grown to the stage of having a professor because those we had in the past were all useless. They did nothing. Exactly. You went exactly. to, you studied. Look at Obasanjo. Obasanjo did engineering. Obasanjo did engineering. 
But ask oh. Obasanjo now to build, to build one bridge linking his daughter Never. farm to the next village. He cannot build it. He's an engineer yes. in, the, in the military, eating money and serving uh, new colonial interests. Very, very sad indeed. Thank you very much for your insightful call. Thank you very, very much, our dear brother. From Germany, our lines are open. A lot of people are sending in their requests, and we are accepting them. Once I accept your request, now you can call. If I accept your request, now you can place a call, please. Our lines are up. Too many calls are coming in, as always, and jamming up the lines. We only have one line today with which to work with, with which to work with, and then you are free to try and call us. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you are. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning to you. I can hear you very well. Please, your name and where you are. Um, I'm calling from Manchester. From Manchester in England. Please go ahead. United Kingdom. Yes, yes sir. Ahead. Sir, I just want to bless you for what you are doing for our people. We are very grateful. You are the reason now that the Igbo man can be able to speak. And at this moment, I just want to ask you this question. Since these people have been adopting our people, mostly our young men in Igbo land, what are you going to do to stop these people from adopting them? Because when the war comes, we will not have our young men with us anymore because they must have been adopted secretly by this um, Nigerian military. And another thing I want to tell you is that you should never be discouraged. We know how hard it is to fight for a black man. I want to assure you that the same thing that is happening to you now happened to Moses when he was trying to take uh, the children of Israel out of uh, um, Egypt. Some people refused to go with him. Some people refused. Some said they prefer to stay back. So definitely what the governors are doing and those who are benefiting from the corruption of Nigerian government. So they are the ones who don't want us to have our freedom. Yesterday, I was lucky to meet, I met a man uh, where I work, an elderly man about 90 years. I asked him about the Biafran war. He told me everything about it. So I, I now told him that, do you know that there's... Um, our youth now, they are fighting back. They are agitating back for our freedom. He said, yes, we should not, we should never give up. That we should continue that definitely we will have Biafra. That he told me that during the war, why we lost the war was because of the starvation, because of uh, uh, the hunger the Nigerian government imposed on Biafra. And he also told me that if we have hold on, that we would have won the war. And then he also told me that if we eventually become a free nation that we will enjoy. I'm telling you the truth. I just told my husband about this. I work in the hospital. So after speaking to him, I have a bit of relief knowing that surely Biafra will come. Is that so person I, a white man or a black man? This 90 year old you spoke to, white or black? He's, he, he, he's, he's a black man. He's a black man. Is he a black? Is he is he a Biafran or or a West Indian he, he, or from where? Where is he from? He's a he's 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 from Abia State. He told me the story. He is ninety and, years and, old. What is he still doing in England? Ninety years. His family. His family is here. He's living with his family. Okay. That so uh, that yes. is an example of what will happen to all of us if Biafra yes. doesn't come at the age of ninety. Yes. When you yes. should be in the village blessing the young generation they'll bring you hot drink and you bless them you'll be abroad wearing blankets yes. because it's very cold that is what we are fighting so yes. he knows what he's talking about we are going to make it possible for such people to come back to our land and bless yes. our land that's what we are fighting for that was the reason yes, why sir. i asked you how can a 90 year old be in somebody else's land have you seen a 90 year old white man anywhere in the zoo no exactly so and also and as well our people has to reason like my very self i've been uh, each time i remember that if we don't get this biafra our children will end up staying here and if, if they continue to stay in abroad definitely they, they are blacks they will also treat them the way they are treating us now here 
you you can see what uh, the the royal family and Prince Harry's wife what they just what just came out of whatever they they are doing even even though we know that the press here is horrible we know that then the secret of the asking about the color of the child and whatever they they, they ask her this is also what our children will will go through in in years to come so please we are re really hungry for this freedom we are really hungry so that my children can go home and live in my own when i go when i when i exist they can live in biafra land as biafrans and my children i've started telling them everything about biafra i've told them the little they know they know you and they are happy they are willing to go home as soon as biafra comes so Marzi, i am I am so grateful. Today, I am blessed to have spoken to a choosing one. You are indeed a choosing one. God has blessed you. You are uniting all dear friends uh, everywhere. I, I, I saw a, a, a Bini, um, a do or a, 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 a Godomi Godo man i spoke to him he said yes he believed in biafra and he's one of us so but our people are now reasoning they are trying to come in time that they are all Biafrans. in fact may god bless you may god bless yes, you sir. i am i am willing whenever the time comes i am willing to go home i will keep my children here i will go home and fight for biafra if they if i cannot handle the gun i will volunteer myself to treat or i will volunteer to be a cook for those who will handle the gun for them thank it's you very the promise much. i'm making i know thank and, I, and you. I, welcome god bless you. I welcome you thank you very very much i enjoyed your call to be honest with you thank you very very much our dear sister Thank you so much. We are live and we are direct. As I said before, our job is to present all these fools, all these criminal conspirators before Elohim in heaven. Then only him can judge them. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Mazi. Good morning from good, India. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Go ahead. Uh, Mazi, my name is Mazi Okibaram Chedozi. I'm calling from Greater Maida, India. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for what you've been doing for us, for fighting so hard. And uh, I happen to be a principal officer. So what I want to ask this morning is that, Mazin, when you started this program, I believe that it's quite tough. And I believe that if you can share a little bit about things that were, that were driving you then, I believe that some principal officers that are lacking consistency in what we are doing today can be able to learn from there. As a principal officer, I understand to some extent how difficult it is to keep hold. So uh, I don't know if you can be able to enlighten us from then that nobody believed in you, that you look like you are alone, that you're doing this. I want to understand what those things that are driving you so hard to be believing in Biafra and hoping that this is going to get to this height. And at the end of the day, it's going to uh, be something that the whole world we would love to participate in. And secondly, I want to make an announcement, Marzi. Mm -hmm. Um, France here in India, we would like, we would love to have you speak to us in India. Uh, because I understand that a lot of people, Biafrans here are much, much interested in what we are doing. Even those that are not, they, they claim they are not Biafrans, they claim that they don't want to belong to IPOB. Today, I do, I have the opportunity to speak up to a lot of them and they are really turning to to listen to what we're saying so it's going to be a, a, a great one for you to be able to write your spirit and not only here in india but across asia they really want to hear you speak to us and, and as well i want to tell you that here we have our people the way they behave and the way people other part of the world behave is different here we have what i call uh, uh, the, the doubt issue so even till now uh, some of them might not really understand they might not really understand that whatever they put is going to IPOB directly. So for to clear all that, I will love to, I will love you to speak to Bia France here in India and also uh, we trade that to uh, other parts of Asia. That's my question and my contribution this morning. Thank you so much, Mazi, for giving me this time. Thank you. Well. Thank you very much. And I will answer your question. I will answer your question. The very first question you asked. I will, I will say that you asked me to 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 explain to fellow principal officers, uh, what motivates, what drives the level of consistency 
is the promise of Elohim. I will take you back to what David Ben-Gurion said, the very first prime minister of Israel, what he said when they asked him at the floor of the United Nations what propels him to create, or should I say, to facilitate the coming of the state of Israel. He said it is the promise of God in the holy book. You call it the Bible, we call it the Torah. That was what David ben they, they asked him, why are you doing what you're doing? He said it is because he is standing on the promise of the almighty creator of the universe. That Israel must come. And on the same, should I say, pronouncement, I anchor my very firm belief in the coming of Biafra. I told you before that I read a book, or should I say a pamphlet, 1985 Hajjoko Lecture, delivered by Professor Donatusi Bemwaga. I was traveling from Owere, from Omaha to Owere. I was in a highest bus and I was reading that very pamphlet. I'm not going to tell you how, of course, you can work out how old I, I, I was in 1985. I think I then barely turned between 17 and 18 years of age. I read that very pamphlet and it had a very profound effect on me. In that very lecture that Professor Donatusi Bemwaga delivered, in that man in one paragraph summarized what was happening to us as a people because every one kilometer was a checkpoint extortion harassment intimidation and from childhood i never wanted anybody to be maltreated i hate it i hate injustice from childhood and what we are doing today what i'm doing today is a manifestation of that very orientation that i had you know, in my house, we used to have a lot of um, helpers, you know, either have people from my mother's side or people from my father's side that will come to help, you know, as house helper, you know, help, all the rest of it. I had one. He's now in New and I'm sure he's listening to this very day. His name is Emmanuel. Roughly about the same age as me, he came from my mother's side to help us in our house. We, we had a very huge household, so to help with the chores we went to fetch water together we ate from the same pot we wear the same clothes sometimes we exchange clothes during holiday time i would go to his house for holidays he was not serving me i wasn't serving him because i did not believe that another person's child should come to serve another person's child i don't believe in that even at that very small early age, I believed in the equality of all men and women before God Almighty in heaven. I hated injustice. I read a lot of books. At the age of 12, I read George Orwell's Animal Farm, where some animals were bigger or greater than the others. I hated it. And at the age of 12 years old, I despised communism and socialism. At the age of 12, can you believe that? At the age of 12, I hated communism. Of course, I was at Government College of Omaha where we were encouraged to read. And we read George Orwell's Animal Farm in class two. Now, I want to tell you that you must have it in you to love your people. It is not something you are taught to do. You must have it inside you to love and to serve your people. If you, you are living in India and India is doing very well, People are living in Malaysia, living across the whole of Southeast Asia, and that those countries are doing very well. If you want to live there without replicating those things back home that is making you to enjoy life in those places, that means you're an evil person you shouldn't serve. Allow me to repeat. If you travel to America, you travel to Europe, you see skyscrapers, you see wonderful roads, you see beautiful bridges and beautiful houses, you fail to bring it back, or you fail to think, how can I take these things back to Zombie? That means you are not cut out to serve your people. Because as a servant of your people, anywhere you see something good, you want to bring it back to your own people. Therefore, those who are called into service are those who are naturally made and built for this very calling. But it is very, very, and some of you are saying it's very difficult. Sometimes it's very hard. Our people can be very, very frustrating. 
do not look at people look at the end goal always focus on the objective freedom 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 for everybody when biafra does come of course it's going to come when it does come eventually let, let me tell you how I, I console myself sometimes look at the way we revere we love and we venerate ujubu and he did not get us biafra look at the way we love and venerate timothy and all those that fought imagine the love we have for Colonel Achuzier and all the rest of them. The love we have for Mobosi and all the rest of them. Remember the love we have for the lives of Madiebo and all the rest of them. Did they get Biafra for us? The answer is no. Now imagine what will happen to your name when Biafra comes. Forever. You see the way that the Bible till today have we forgotten about Moses, Joshua, Caleb? Have you forgotten them? You have not. These are people that fought and released Israel, the children of God, to inhabit the land that God gave to them. Till today, remember them. Let me tell you the truth. Honestly, before heaven and this earth, anybody who is part of this very movement, from the highest to the lowest, there will be a time when your children, your grandchildren will go to school or your great great grandchildren will go to school. they will ask them was your mom or dad part of ipob that will be all you will require in life to succeed in other words if you're serving ipob if you are in ipob you are preparing yourselves for immortality this flesh may die but your name will live forever and ever because we appreciate, let, let me tell you, there is something our people don't know. Despite our stubbornness, our high headedness, our sometimes very difficult way of understanding each other or doing things, our people are very, very appreciative of those that serve them in truth and in every honesty. That is who we are. Our people never forget those that serve them honestly and diligently. The same way we remember Mbakwe to you today. Who is going to forget Dr. Michael Obara? It's impossible. That is who we are. We never forget those that serve us in truth. We know that Obara served us in truth and in every honesty. He built our land. We know that Mbakwe came. Exactly what I told you before. What is it that Obara and Mbakwe have in common? They went abroad. They saw good things abroad and they brought it back home. Why do you think that Malaysia is developed? If you're a minister in Malaysia, you travel abroad, you didn't bring back any idea, they will sack you. That means your trip abroad is a waste. What did you learn? Bring it back here. Let us replicate it. What you're doing and other principal officers all over the world is building up what I call an identity of immortality. Forever and ever, your lineage, your children will be remembered and celebrated. Can you imagine if today somebody were to come to you to say, I am from the lineage of Joshua or from the lineage of Moses. I'm sure even if you're sitting there, you stand up to greet them. Something that money can never buy. When you remember all these things, then you redouble your effort because you're not working for any man. You are working to fulfill the promise of the creator of the universe. The promise that God made, you are bringing it to life. What you're doing is beyond human understanding. What IPOB is doing, man cannot understand it. Because we are bringing down or calling down the kingdom of heaven upon this very earth. As Yeshua prayed. Let thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Thank you very much. Let's take this call. The caller on the line, can you hear me, your name and where you're calling from, please? Yes, my screen leader, Mazen Namde Kano, the screen leader of indigenous people of Biafra. To go Biama be with you because we are doing a normal job to save the life of Biafra, not only the life of Biafrans, to save the black race from the shackles of Tamnat Code, Republic of the Sioux, and then Africa as a whole. My name is still remain Mazen 
I'm calling from the city of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Mazi, what I want to ask you right now, you have uh, reiterated that, you have touched it from the last caller before me. But what I want to ask, because we have known there is a lot of uh, benefit we are going to get, but Mazi, there's something confusing me, some of the peer friends or some of the IPOP, those that claimed that they have joined IPOP. <laughs> they don't attend the meeting. They are IPOP on the oath. They came to meeting and took oath with IPOP. Some people come to the meeting from two years, three years, six months. They don't contribute to time. They don't pay monthly dues. They don't pay any kind of levy you bring out or you brought out in IPOP. When you go talk to them, private they have now reminded me don't know what you are telling me i am ipop on that earth they have taken oath on ipop therefore i am ipop you're not going to deprive me of my ipop membership these are the people or he remind you that you have been on ipop for eight years ago 2017 2015 but for since more than five years three years two years he has never even Pay common 20 common dime to his monthly dues. We don't talk about other compulsory levy. So, my question is what is the position of these people? Because if you try to talk to them even private, they will now remind you that, mind you, I am IPOP, I'm under oath. I took the oath you took with me. And some people will be trying all their best, spend their time, attend meetings, paying the dues, pay all that losing, do even do evangelism, do a lot of things to make sure that we within the consciousness of our people living in, especially I'm saying this in Malaysia precisely, they claim they are with you, with IPOP, but they are not doing anything in IPOP. Call it dues, call it attend the meeting, they don't do, but they say they are IPOP, they're under oath. So what is the what are we going where are we going to place them or what is it going to happen with this sort of people because it's full in Malaysia Kuala Lumpur precisely. Thank you, Mazi and Chuko Grabiama. Continue to be with you for what you are doing for Biafran. Thank, thank you very much. Thank Mazi. you very much, sir. Thank you. Um, there are fair weather friends. There are those that will fall by the wayside. I remind you of the parable of the sower. As you scatter this seed, some will fall on fertile soil, some will fall on rocky grounds, some will fall on the sand, some may even fall on thorns. Only those that fell on fertile ground will be able to germinate and bear forth fruit. For those people shall be called Umu Chineke, the sons of God Almighty in heaven and daughters, of course. Not everybody that says, my father, my father will enter heaven. And with that, I bring that to an end. You will understand what I'm talking about. And Elohim is in charge. And we are moving forward. Forget about them and continue to move. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Yes, Mazi. Good, uh, good afternoon from here. I'm calling from Malaysia. From Malaysia as well. My Please go ahead. Is, uh, we are listening. Please go ahead. Are you one of yes, those that don't pay their dues uh, in Malaysia? You don't attend meetings? Not, not really, Mazi. Okay. I, I, I do. I do. Uh, my name is uh, just Omifani. Ifani, turn down your system. I can hear your system. Turn it down, please. Turn your system down. Okay, okay, okay Mazi. I have. Go ahead. Uh, Mazi, my, my question is this. Uh, uh, concerning these people that say uh, the Ikure people that say they are not evil. No, not Ikure people. Are, no, 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 no. Don't say that, please. The Ikure people did not say they are not evil. It is only we get those raised with money from abandoned property. It is guilty conscience that is pursuing them. We can needed to deny his evil identity in order to serve his full and masters very, very well. We can knows that he's an evil man. But he is ravaged by guilty conscience. Some of them, their father stole properties that didn't belong to them. And in our land is a taboo. In Igbo land, in Igbo culture, it is a taboo for you to steal landed property belonging to your brother, your cousin, 
or your sister. For them not for them to shield themselves from the ravages of guilt, they said they are not able. Of course, the is evil. Have you not seen the new state creation that they are touting all over the place, the Flannery Janja weed? They, are, they want to create a state comprising of Igbo, of um, Igbo people, as well as those of them they took from Amok, which are Igbo people, into a new state. Do not despair. No Igbo person, no sensible Igbo man said he is not Igbo. Let me tell you what has been happening in the zoo and what they do very cleverly. Before now, when the Yoruba media was against us in line with the Janjaweed, they magnify what idiots like we can say. What ordinary people are, anytime you say, I am Ikure, I'm Igbo, nobody will publish it. But if you say, I am Ikure, I'm not Igbo, every paper will carry it. That is why it is always very good for us to read between the lines. Forget about the noise making of a few empty barrels like we can and listen to the voice of reason of other well-meaning Igwere sons and daughters. They know they're Igbo. Everybody knows this very clearly. Some of them claim they are from Igodo Migodo. I don't, I don't dispute that. But Igodo Migodo is also Igbo land. If it comes yes, that way. You've answered the, yes, I've answered the question because I see no reason why someone that speaks Igbo, that tries to do everything like Igbo, we begin to deny his identity. When you but lose a case, war, it is uh, always like that. When you lose a war, it is always like that. We fought a war of attrition for three years. The Flannery Janjaweed came and gave biscuit and chewing gum and um, tobacco to some people and kai kai hot drink to some people and say, uh, one Nigeria, if you don't say you are one Nigeria, will kill you. I had a good brother of ours from Eka speak to me. And then he told me, this is a so-called Delta or Delta Igbo. He told me that they're from Uri. His father was a traditional ruler of his people. Every year, Ezeli will come to their village and sprinkle um, clay on the ground. They are from Nuri. That is the way it is. Till tomorrow morning, we know who we are. Those who claiming they are not Igbo, they are living in denial. And I go as far as saying that everybody is Igbo. If you are a John, if you are a Bibio, and I say it clearly, go back and interpret it however way you want it to be interpreted. The truth stands eternal. And I keep saying to them, are you doubting me that all of us are evil? Uh, one that doubted me a few days ago, I said to him, go back to Google and Google the word Ibibio. After he Googled the word Ibibio, I, I asked him, please read to me what you can see. He said, related to Igbo. I asked him to Google Efik. He Googled Efik. What can you see? Efik and Ibibio are one. Both are related to Igbo. I asked him to Google a job. He Googled a job. I asked him, read to me what you can see. He saw a job related to Igbo. I said to him, do you want us to continue? He said, no, he's seen enough. And that was it. That is the truth. We are all one people. That is why in CBD came. That is why if you go to Abreba today, they speak the same language or more or less with the Bibio people. If you go to a Jaram, there is no difference between a Jaram and Arachupu. It is the same thing. That is why Incibidi came from there. Incibidi, Incibidi is a uniting um, 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 form of writing that binds the whole of Biafra together. If you go to places like Ihiala, if you go to Ihiala today, to Obulisiozo, do you know where they came from? They came from Igoromigoro land. Obulisiozo, you see today in Ihiala, their ancestral home is Igoromigoro. Why are we deceiving ourselves? As I said before, once your mother ties to peace wrapper, you are one of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for your call. Thank you. We are live and direct. We are educating. We are sensitizing. We are enlightening. You know, Janja, we they listen to these our brokers and they go crazy. He is brainwashing them. He is doing this. I said simply, we are all Igbo people. Do you doubt me? Go to any village in Anambra right now, get a man that is up to 90 years old and above and ask him about the war between the Idu people and the Oba and he will tell you.
everything we say is backed up with facts and figures. That is why we can never fail. And our people are very intelligent. That's one thing about Biafran people. Once you make sense to them, they will understand it and they will follow you. I have a caller now on the line. This caller, give us your name and where you're calling from. We are live and we are direct and the world is listening. Yeah. My good, good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Yeah, my name is Charles Obidike. Charles Obidike. Yes, and where are you calling from? Yeah, Charles yeah. Obidike, where are you calling from? We are live and direct. I, I will, uh, 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 please hold on a second. We are live on the air. Please, our barrister is calling me. We are broadcasting. We are live on the air. Yes, please continue. My dear brother, continue. Okay. So, uh, you know, I don't know. It pains me each time you come on air and start talking about the black man, the way they reason and all this. And I one of the black man, but I know I never reason like that because. Even up to today, I am not an IMBO member. I am not, I'm not an IPO member, but I have been following what you have been saying since 2014 till today. And no one has ever seemed to be lie. All of them are truth. And you made me to become like as I've gone to university. More than the people that was my age mate. I'm 64 years of today. But all these things you are saying in this country and wherever you are, is they are all truth. And not even the truth. And it pains me when anybody is making any argument concerning this, concerning that. I don't know. People will see truth, but the level we are in, we are in it, in it today is because of our church in this country, Nigeria. They are the part of the problem. Eighty percent of the problem, they are the one who caused it. Because in the Bible, when Elijah and Elijah and all of them were we are prophesizing or doing the work of God, when you do something that is not good even the king they will go and tell him because i remember what happened in second king chapter one when a king fall from his house and then decided to go and ask the god of ekron whether if he's if he will live again elijah met his servant that he sent on the road to tell him that you should go back and tell the king is it because there's no god in israel that is why you are going to ask the god of ekron and because of that you will die you will never get off from that bed and when the man sent people to come and, to come and kill the, the uh, Elijah, first 50 set of people with their captain, they died. Fire consumed them. The second one, the same thing. The third one came and began to dialogue back in other words. And when he followed them, the, God, the angel of God asked him to come and follow them. And when they get to that place, he told the king rightly that because you went to go and look other God that is not God, you will die. Then today, Look at people people we have in our church. Somebody like Redeem, who is calling us to go and come, come and go to heaven, knows, knows that there is nobody. And he went as a rock and he came back. And there was people were asking him, What did he see there? He said he was trained not to talk. And up to today, he never tell anybody anything. And yet they are telling us to come and bear. I have I have said I will know I will no longer go to church until until when Biafra come before we know what we are doing in this country. <laughs> <laughs> All the people, Christians are killing in the north. Nobody is talking. No church is talking. They are, are building auditorium. And we are going to build 10,000 auditorium. Whereas Christians they are being killed in the north. They say nothing. I, I don't blame them. I blame the idiots that go to these useless, idiotic churches and, and patronize them. I blame them. But in all fairness, there are some preachers that, that have come out recently to condemn what is happening. There are good ones amongst them. Let us not tie them with the same drug. Just tell me the Somebody will, will, will look a factory closed and will close the factory, then take that, convert that factory to church and begin to pray for you to get work. <laughs> Does that make any sense? <laughs> My dear you close the factory where people will be going to work. Yes, convert uh, it to church and then be praying. Be sick. If, if it is oh, God, are suffering to this lens, the government will get on the track. So I appreciate you. Only thing is that my God will continue to supply all your need according to his riches the glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, I pray that no evil shall befall you in of your life yes, with your family. Yes, you will yes, actualize and make, us, and make us to be human being again in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, that is my prayer yes, for you. This Thank morning. you very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much, my dear brother. Um, everybody approach the this issue he's given us a very new perspective there's somebody called pastor otis i don't know if he's 
if it's related to the principle of RTC that I was under uh, in Government College of I don't know, RTC or RTC, it must be, and I have to call him back. Let me call him back because um, RTC was a very good principle. Uh, it was a principle at Government College of Let me see if I, if I don't know if this is the son, I don't know if it is, um, but RTC or RTC must be part and parcel of that glorious family. I, I loved RTC immensely, immensely. Let me see if I can get him to speak to us, please. I want to ask him, he's a pastor. I want to ask him if he is related to RTC or RTC, a one-time principal at Government College, Omai. I want to ask him. I, am, I have elected to try to call him back to see if he can speak to us i don't think so the line is ringing but i don't think he is not speaking up not yet i wanted to find out if he is yes he's picked up now um the caller on the line are you pastor otc or otc is that correct yes i'm pastor otc or otc i'm is, from abreba you're from abreba yes, are you are you related to to the principal of government college of Mwaha? otc or otc no I no, I'm not relating to, but it's closer to near to the, our village. Okay, the same village, but not yours. Okay, it seems. Are, are you a pilot? It seems you are flying an aircraft. There's a background noise where you are. No, I am beside the metro. I'm going to work, but uh, at the same time, uh, that's what I'm trying to communicate with you this morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Yeah, my name is Pastor Otisigo Otisigo. Uh, it's the first time I try, I introduce myself as a pastor because many people don't know I am a pastor. I always say that my name is Otisigo Otisigo. But today I decided to introduce myself as a pastor, ordained by the Ethiopian. And the pastor is in German today. His name is uh, Pastor uh, 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 Sami Epo. He's on, uh, he's in, in living in, in, in German today, it's a different too. And my question this morning is uh, uh, concerning the uh, oil well that we, uh, the, the Nigerian government are taking, and it seems that when uh, the northern uh, oligarchy have the, both the gold and the other mineral resources, they call it their personal own, but our own become a national case. How? When? Are we going to take back all our things? Because the world uh, seems that they are not listening to what we are saying or the campaign we have been sending to them later from UN and other uh, uh, angle of the world. But they keep mood and they uh, keep uh, watching, looking for us to die until they will come to our rescue. Uh, I think is it the is it the time that we are supposed to take back our things? and pursue all the white people that are taking all control in our land. That the war that we are looking for, they can be able to get it. Or are we going to stay until they wipe it, wipe off from, from the face of the earth? That's my question, my leader. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for that. Um, the truth of the matter is that the people giving the impetus to the Fulani Janjaweed to keep their gold and their diamond from Zamfara, but be drinking our own oil is because of the like the people are the likes of Mwike, Amechi, Hopos, and them are all the fulefus. If they get together and say enough is enough, there will be no oil going to the north. They will try to bring down their army and will defeat them. Nigerian army cannot fight. They are very weak. Everybody knows that they can't fight. That is why they are begging for the mercenaries. That's why they are begging Kiburun, they are begging Chad, they are begging Niger poorest countries in the world to come and help a giant of Africa to fight. This, this is one thing that people do not understand. They are being deceived. People think till today that Britain, sorry, that Nigeria fought a war against uh, Biafra and defeated Biafra. That Go on was an all-conquering general. It is a lie. It is a lie. Without the help, without Britain, Russia, OAU to an extent, Egypt and the acquaintance of the USA, there is no way that Nigeria could have defeated Biafra is not in a million years. This is the same army that cannot even defeat a ragtag band of terrorists in, in Boko Haram or bandits. And we should do away with fear. Fear is a debilitating disease. 
They are taking our oil and gas because we allowed ourselves to become divided and deceived. They appointed the Willings Commission to divide the so-called Niger Delta or carve them away from the wider eastern region. The same white man did not go to the north to create a minority commission for the so-called minorities in the north. Being yoked by Fulani. No. These are the things that people do not understand about this. The, the reason why they are angry with IPOB and trotting out all this propaganda against us and my good self is because they know we know their game and we have discovered their game plan. We now know how possible it was for an equal man to say, I'm not equal, for somebody from a job to say, oh, I, I'm not part of the East or part of Biafra. That was how they deceived Edwin Clark of Pandev. So they can take our oil. That was how they deceived cancer we were. So they can go and take our oil. Today, Ogoni hasn't been cleaned up. Today, people are suffering in Ogoni land, whereas the Sultan of Sokoto owns nearly 20 oil wells in Biafra land. None of us owns an oil well. You need to understand what they have done to us and how we are going to untangle it. And it's a very simple process by educating and enlightening our people to understand that we are one first and foremost. That is why the Fulanis, for Fulanis to subjugate you, they come with one north. They never divide the north. They will tell you we are one north. One, one, one. If you try to divide Fulani from Hausa, they will say no, we are one people. But they come to your land, they, you allow them to divide you. That makes you a very big fool. Let's take this call. The caller on the line, can you hear me? This is Radio Biafra, we are live and direct. And bless you, to, please turn your system down. I beg all of you, please turn down your system. When once I pick your call, turn off your system, because what I'm going to say, the whole world is going to hear it. What you're saying, the whole world is also going to hear it. You don't need to hear your voice two times, do you? Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Ahmadi. Oh, I have a question for you. How are you doing, my lord? Elohim is kind to us. God bless you. Thank you, sir. My question is this. My question is, I have three questions. One is this. What do you want to tell our Biafrans who see themselves serving in Nigerian police, in Onecha, in Oweri, in Aba, in Ebony, killing and the humiliating their brothers? A brother who is a Kekena pep driver, who put a flag of Biafra in his keke? Our Nigeria, our our Biafran brother, who serves in the Nigerian police, will detain him and kill him. Who put a bango of Biafran flag or Biafran identity, a bango or a necklace, something that gives you hope and joy, something that you look at, you summon courage, something that you look at the logo or the flag, you 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 move on, irrespective of the suffering and the hardship, you move on. Our Biafran police, who is in Aba, who is in Uwere, who is in Oka, who is in Enugu, will kill, detain, and humiliate that person. That is my number one question. What message do you have for such an individual who is... is that their end is coming. Biafra? Their end is also coming, and there will be no pity, there will be no mercy. We have all their names. Who has a child? Who has a child who is suffering in the same dilapidated school? In the same abandoned area, in the same gota that all of us are living, he's there with us. That's my number one question. My number two is this. What message do you have? What message do you have for our so-called pastors who has refused, who has refused to open their mouth and say the truth, who continue to deceive us to pray for Nigeria when they know? that God will not answer that question. What message do you have for them? Now, my number three question is this. You have said it over and over again, and it is truth. All you have said is the truth. And we know you are saying the truth. And that is why we must follow you. We will continue to follow you. You said it, and it is written, that the kingdom of God suffered violent, and the violent will take it by force. My Lord, my question is this, to you is this. One time again in America, you told a lady, 
<coughs> when you were having a, a meeting with them, you said they then give us ammunition. The lady said that she did not hear you well. What did you say? You repeated that question. Mm -hmm. Now it has come. My question again is this. Are we going to fight? If we are going to fight, are there things that we need to have, those who cannot fight, like a sword, or those who do not have the liver to withstand this thing? Let them start running now. If you want to run to Cameroon so that you can start running, if you are in the north and you want to sacrifice yourself for there, you sacrifice. What is our fate? Because this thing will not come for free we must fight so that people will say had i known we are going or had it been we were told that we are going to fight i would have dig a trench where i would hide with my family or i would have run away so can we is there any way people will be made to understand because even those in the north when we keep telling them that this is not people of our tribe these are not brothers the people that you are staying in their place are not brothers because they will kill you. We keep telling them, come back home. They refuse. I was living in the north. I lived in the north. I lived in the north. I lived in Nasarawa. I lived in Plateau. I lived in Kano. I come back home. So are we going to fight? Because the lady who asked you that question, what did you say you need? I keep listening to that message, that family meeting you had with them. I keep listening to it over and over again. When she asked you, what did you say you did? Today, I think wherever that lady is, she will be going to, I think from Wadibo Congress anyway, she will be listening to that uh, message where you told them what you need openly. And she refused. I don't know whether they honored that meeting that day or what. I accepted your request. But today, they have brought that killing to our house. And it is real. It is true that they brought it. They Thank you very much. are killing us on daily basis. I, I'm going to so, answer yes, your, I will, yes. I will answer your question, my dear brother. Listen via your listening device. Let me answer your question. Number one, we are keeping tag of every police officer or personnel involved, especially their friends, in the molestation, in the facilitation of the abduction of our people. And I'm telling their families now that there will be no mercy. We are going to succeed. It's not a question of if. We are going to bring about the coming of Biafra. There is nothing any idiot can do about it. Nothing. And when that time comes, we are going to judge you very harshly. And if you're found guilty, you'll be hanged at the nearest tree closest to your father's compound. All of you in police uniform in our land, aiding Fulani Janjaweed, the same Fulani you're helping to abduct your own fellow blood relatives are helping bandits and terrorists to kill your people in the north. I want you to understand what you're doing. all these useless, especially those in Imo State. Hope was or man will never ever be forgiven. There's something as we for, for me goes for me as well. All of you claiming you are I'm obeying order. Order came from above. When the time comes, God is my witness, you will be hanged in public for aiding and abating Fulani Janjaweed that advance, should I say, incursion into our land. As for the pastors, may God have mercy upon your wretched, idiotic souls. There are good pastors here, but all of you that have kept quiet, all of you keeping quiet. Despite what is happening, Archbishop Desmond Tutu fought apartheid from the pulpit. All of you, some of you idiots, all you is about tithe and offering and building auditorium that will contain skeletons. I'm asking you, shameless people, call themselves the men of God, more or less like the men of Satan. None of you will see the kingdom of heaven because you're all evil people using the name of God to deceive using the name of God to accumulate wealth, using the name of God to do heaven knows what, to, to prop up a decaying evil regime. You ask me, what do we need to fight? We need guns and we need bullets. Because let me make one thing very clear to all of you. Those of you who are so idiotic because you are raised in the zoo, you schooled in the zoo, all you are thinking is about the Zoological Republic. You know nothing about Fulani Janjaweedism. 
What they are doing to you today is in their bone marrow, is in their DNA. They will never stop. The only thing that can stop Fulani is the sea, Atlantic Ocean. And they are coming. And as I said, I will do a program on Sunday that will shock all of you. To understand the mindset of the Fulani and the hatred they have for you. That is why any policeman or army man, you are a Biafran, you are helping them to arrest, to torture, to abduct, as is happening now in Imo State. Now I'm saying it in all of you are now, it goes through one ear, comes out of the other. When things will happen in Imo, don't say I did not warn you. I will, I'm telling you, when thing, this thing also Odema is doing and all of you are quiet. When something will happen in Imo State, you know where, don't say I did not warn you. Because the rage is coming. All of you helping Fulani to conquer our land, all of you will suffer one, all of you will die one after the other. If you like being the police or in the army, Fulani came in as a minority and conquered the house, I conquered everybody that are coming down to our side. You cannot ask yourself a simple question why is it that Fulani can say that will remain in Yoruba land no matter what? Why are they not saying it about the East? Because of Eastern Security Network. We are there to protect you and your family and your lineage and your heritage. Yet you are so blind and idiotic you cannot see it. If you are in the north, you are a sacrificial lamb. And on that note, we bring today's proceedings to an end. I will try to reinstate this question and answer every Friday to answer the idiots and the rumor mongers and the liars and the deceivers and the conspirators guardian newspaper has published the same rubbish again anytime we are making waves what they want to do is that they bribe google and they throw out all these useless concocted um, write-ups by dss and they populate the search if you go to google now and search for mars and uh, search for namdekan in google you will see them uh, what happened in the, the registration of ipub in england uh, has made us to think twice and all that rubbish. All lies. A country of lies. How can I support a country that, that, that lives on peddling lies and deceiving people? As I said before, if not for IPOB, some of you learned illiterates will be going about thinking Ojuku declared war on Biafra. Whereas all Ojuku wanted was restructuring, the same restructuring you're asking for after 50 years. Now, who is the idiot? Now you see why I call you people zoo animals, because you cannot reason properly. And that is why I maintain anybody who calls himself or herself a Nigerian, I can never regard you as a human being. Thank you all for listening. I'll be back on Sunday. Advertise it everywhere. Sunday evening, of course, I'll be live to the whole world. Put it out there. Advertise it. I am coming to educate. I am coming to tell you something that from a perspective you never knew existed. And as soon as our app is out, please, our alternative to Facebook, make sure that you go into it as quickly as possible. We can no longer be defeated by silencing our voices as they did in 1967. This time around, we have options and we are going to utilize it. In all that you do, you must pray for Eastern Security Network. Pray for them and support them. And as I said before, be very careful and mindful of what you're doing and where you're going to. Our enemies are with, there are some people who are within working for the zoo, Janjaweed government, but we must defeat all of them. All of them will be defeated. It doesn't matter their lies or their deception. Once you are in IPOB and you're compelled to leave IPOB, it means you've been possessed by the evil spirit and you were not meant to be a freedom fighter in the first place because we remain whiter than white and whiter than snow. You will see it. Who can stop us? We that Elohim sent, who is the bagger that will stop us? Nobody can. They are faffing around all they like. You cannot stop us. Any Biafran you kill, there will be a revenge. And they know, they know when we revenge how it is. There will be revenge, you know that very well. And it's coming. And more ferocious than before. 
Thank you all for listening from me, from here, this very morning. It is good morning. <laughs>